at least you have something if you have the free versions. Right. So but, you're, running, you're running around in your underwear. At least you got some clothes on. <laughs> it's not appropriate, but you are covered. <laughs> 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 You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT. And joining me as always is Donna Grindle of Carden, the compliance, security, and privacy, and all those types of experts. <laughs> You got a little overexcited there, buddy. I Just start to, rattling was, off things. That'll work. I, I keep having people say, what, is, what does Donna do? What is this card and thing? And I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, we are your privacy and security advisors. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyway, somehow we've gotten three years into this podcast and people don't know what we do still. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're good. At, yeah. We just do the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Free. <laughs> Otherwise, we live on the streets because uh, we got nothing. Yep. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily bring us to today's topic, but no, it doesn't. Gonna, since you're not going to be on the streets, <laughs> where are you going to be coming up? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, well, uh, October 18th, I'll be at the Georgia Pediatric Practice Administrators Fall Forum or Conference or whatever that's called. Indeed. Uh, yeah, it's a shindig, and uh, uh, I get the pleasure of doing the early morning keynote, and so who knows what'll come out. Impressive. Usually, they <laughs> save you save you for last. <laughs> oh, no. they, oh, we'll get people to stay. I was like, no, <laughs> no, mom, don't play that game no more. <laughs> but now, uh, you know, I get first thing in the morning or right after lunch. Either way, you got to wake up. Yeah, yeah, those are always fun. <laughs> all right and coming up in october do we still have any seats left because i don't know that we do where well we're at the original limit we've at the original limit that we set already and somebody asked us could we potentially add on a couple more so there's the we might be able to do it limit look <laughs> gives us two more seats and uh, so at this time, the, we believe there are two seats that we are going to add. All right. So we do we have two seats left or we have two seats we're going to add that's already taken? We have added two seats <laughs> and the people that ask us to add them have not taken them yet. Okay. So we have two seats left that's so right. far. Yeah. So if you want them, then you know, give us a holler. Maybe hurry up there, boy. <laughs> they may not be available by this time. The time this airs. However, yeah. if <laughs> if you if you go to thehippabootcamp dot com and you see a place to purchase, it's still open. <laughs> oh, great! No pressure there for us to remember to take it off of there. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to shut her down. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be a good group. I'm really. It's you know a lot of diverse. Uh, experience and viewpoints. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be cool. So for those of you who decided that you'd wait to the last minute, well, didn't work out for you, did it? <laughs> and when we open the next one up, maybe we'll get in earlier, but that'll be a while. It'll be a few months. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much everybody got in on super early bird pricing. Uh, I can't blame them. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way to do it. I'm excited. I'm ready to do it. The worm pricing works. The warm pricing it usually does. <laughs> yeah, right. so there good you go. deal. So today's podcast is going to be fairly interesting, like like all of them. We're going to talk about the Sys Twenty controls, which some people are going don't know anything about that, <laughs> and mm. how that applies to cybersecurity and HIPAA. Well, yeah, and it, it's it's Sys C I S, not because we're in healthcare. We have to be clear; it's not Sys C Y S Y S. Not that. No, no. We don't know anything about those. <laughs> we can't help you there. We can help you with it. Yeah, Center for Internet Security, CIS, mm -hmm. controls. Yes. So these controls originally developed by the SANS Institute. So it's security people. Mm -hmm. uh, and now the Center for Internet Security, CIS, 
So some people call it the Sands 20. Some people call it the Sis 20. Some people just call it the 20. The 20. <laughs> the 20. It's the 20. But basically, it's where a whole bunch of security nerds got together and said, look, let's, let's make a list. And it's literally like a to-do list. Mm-hmm. For a business to, if you don't have a framework that you're going to follow and you don't have a regulation like HIPAA and all these kind of things, it's that checklist that people always want. Tell me what to do in the order to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it does. It's one of those as close to a checklist and a framework as you can get. Right. So if you're not going to do a framework, but you want to start doing cybersecurity, you can go and, and you just download this list and, and it's got very specific details on it. And if you follow it, it will help you secure your information. And so that's why we're looking at it because a lot of it is directly related to HIPAA. Mm-hmm. And for those who don't have a lot of help with HIPAA besides us, um, helping them with HIPAA, it will let you take this list and and it gives you very specifics to do. If you follow all those, then you're gonna it, you get that help to know exactly what I need to do to meet these requirements. So it gives you a lot of those things. So that's why we're gonna talk about it. Plus, anybody that wants to take a deeper dive and make sure that their security goes beyond HIPAA can use it as well. So it's very good. Uh, your intermediate step between nothing, <laughs> HIPAA, and beyond HIPAA. You can do all of that with, with these. It's still based on the same concepts, you know, the NIST CSF. We talk about that, and I teach it, and we know that's where we're going, the cybersecurity framework with HIPAA, where it says you've got to identify what you need to protect. How are you going to protect it? How are you going to know when something goes wrong? What are you going to do then? And how are you going to get things back to order? Identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. Right. You don't have an acronym for that yet. <clears throat> I know. Okay. Now the Apidur. <laughs> <Apidur. laughs> Some way to remember that. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> I just visualize the the thing. But anyway, they narrow it down and just say no, protect, prepare. It's okay. the same stuff. KPP. And, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the KPP, you know me, <laughs> but it's basically a scenario where you say, this is where you start and follow these steps. And when you get that done, then you go to the next phase mm-hmm. and you follow those steps. And when you get that done, then you go to the last phase. And if you follow these, it will pretty much build what you need to do HIPAA. In a fairly good way. I mean, we'll mention a couple of the differences in there. But the whole idea, they what they, the advocates of the 20 anyway, uh, talk about it being the, the pair two principle, the also known as the 80-20 rule, which is what I always call it. Uh, Pareto. Pareto. I know. Just help mama out. I always call it the 80-20 rule because I mess that up every time. I know, but you said pair two. I never heard it called pair two principle. It's Pareto. It is. But, you know, I just glance up and keep going because 80-20 is what I call it. Okay. 80% of your results come from 20% of your overall work. That's why I only work 20% of the time. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> the 80-20 rule is always, you know, a lot of times you, 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 salespeople say it all the time, 80-20. Mm-hmm. Uh, you talk to 10 people, you get eight no's, two yeses. Yeah. You know, and so every time you get a no, you just put it in the bucket because you got to get eight of them to get those two yeses, and it helps salespeople. You know, yeah, it's but it's everywhere. I mean, like I just it's got in everything re- you do. Yeah. I just got finished reading the book on it. Like, there's a whole book on the eighty twenty principle, and just how it shows up in almost everything is just kind of freaky. <laughs> it's like the Fibonacci secrets <laughs> uh, sequence secrets. Yeah, oh, this is gonna be a long episode. <laughs> All right, so, but the 20 uses that concept that says, look, if we can focus on a certain amount of things, then we're going to prevent 80% of the problems. Mm-hmm. So if we can prevent 80% of the problems, then we can deal with the 20%, which is great because so many people get hit because they're not dealing with 80% of the problems. You know what I'm saying? Yep. 
but <laughs> don't get too excited because <laughs> this isn't like, okay, go over there, move that box over there, and you're done kind of checklist. You, you don't just flip a switch. I mean, it's it's literally things that you have to do, like projects that you have to do. It's not just, hey, go do this one thing, check it off. Yeah. Don't, yeah. This is what's considered, you start with what they call the basics. And the basics are six things that you need to have, but they say that if you do the first five, you're going to handle that 8%. Right. I don't know. Obviously, with HIPAA, we've got to do more than that, but here's where it starts. It says you do an inventory and control of hardware assets. Okay. Now, it literally has eight sub-controls under that one item. So there, there you can see it's not just make a spreadsheet of your hardware and you're done with that step. <laughs> There's eight things you do under it, but you can see what I'm talking about, that it's giving you very specific things to do. Well, what's the first thing you got to do in HIPAA? You got to have a assessment. Uh, your assessment, and you're supposed to have an inventory that's accurate of your hardware. How often do we hear, I can't keep up with that? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, we told you the story of the thing in Hong Kong where the uh, hospital somewhere gets a call from a, uh, somebody that bought one of their computers that they didn't even know was gone. It's now in Hong Kong with all the data on it. And, you know, they were being nice. They just called to ask what the password was. <laughs> hmm. But if you don't know where it is, then you're not, <laughs> you're not properly controlling an inventory in your hardware, are you? <laughs> no. Yeah, one might wonder what you're doing. So you have to keep up with it. Yeah. Don't you have to inventory the children when you're a parent? And you got, or even worse, you're a teacher and you're taking them all on a field trip. You got to count them all. Yeah. You know, it's like when I was in Key West and we were all, uh, this group of us on a pontoon boat going out to a place called Marvin Key where you're out there with all these other boats in the middle of the water and we're counting how many are on there. I was like, all right, we got 11. <laughs> we just need to have 11 come back. We don't care if it's the same 11. <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure we put 11 back on the boat. <laughs> it's that kind of inventory may not be so helpful in this scenario. But I have to inventory my assets. Then I have to inventory and control the software assets. And there's 10 some controls on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's, you know. Don't. Most people don't think about that. Like they think of the hardware assets because it's kind of physical, but they don't think mm -hmm. about the software part of it. Mm -mm. And you, you know, one machine could have, you know, fifteen or twenty different licenses that are important. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I know that. Anytime I have to re reinstall Windows on a computer, I know it's hateful, isn't it? What kind of software are we using? Oh, we don't really have anything on there. And then when you reinstall Windows, then they bring you a list of this twenty software things they can't find mm -hmm. product keys for. <laughs> yeah. That they didn't have when they were talking to you. And then when it takes you like, you know, a day to set up a computer, it's like, why is that so hard? <laughs> then you do it. <laughs> why don't you charge me for eight hours worth of uh, technician yeah. labor? <laughs> yeah, I promise you, if you do it, it goes on for months. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, if you have that inventory of your hardware and you have that inventory of your software assets, your uh, one of those pieces under HIPAA also talks about knowing exactly what goes on your devices and having that control. That's part of those first two steps. Mm -hmm. So, number one, know where all the hardware is. Number two, know what all the software is that's on them. Right. Yeah. So, those are still key elements. So, already, <laughs> already we've already shot a hole in the whole thing about, you know, HIPAA made easy. <laughs> I mean, this is yeah. the the sys twenty is easier than HIPAA, and people are already freaking out over step one and two. <laughs> 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 what I gotta do all that work? <laughs> nah. Yeah, I can't just run this program. Well, you can run that program, but it's not going to tell you everything that's on every device connected to your network. <laughs> what if the device isn't connected right now? What if it's connected only three hours a week? How are you going to make sure you're accounting for it just by running a program? We haven't got to the hard ones yet. That's I know. <laughs> These are the first two. Step one, step two. Yeah, number three um, is it starts getting a little bit harder. I don't know. It's kind of, this one's more like you can 
actually run programs to do it. <laughs> Continuous vulnerability management. Okay, that's exactly what's part of HIPAA. Mm-hmm. That you need to do that. And it's things like having the antivirus and the scans and, you know, those kind of things in place uh, that you're constantly trying to manage your vulnerabilities and, and understand what they are and how you can control them. There's several sub controls under that as well, as you can imagine. Yeah, should be. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, people don't know what they're managing. Okay, what's the vulnerability? <laughs> <laughs> how do I manage it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Or if you're really cool, you can say Vulns, you know. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not there yet. I know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, <laughs> I know. I, told, I was speaking last night, and I was like, you know, I, nerd is the new cool. Because <laughs> it was a just a general business organization, and I was like, nerd is the new cool. And every time some real nerdy thing would come up, I was like, if you're really cool, you would you would say that. And Vulns is one. <laughs> if you're really cool, you would say that. Controlled use of administrative privileges. Now, this one will drive you insane in smaller organizations. Yeah, because everybody has administrative access to everything. Uh-huh. And and what they don't get is it's not that p- you don't trust people. It's that you don't want people to accidentally encrypt everything or delete <laughs> things or, you know, they get their credentials stolen. And that means admin credentials are stolen. I mean, it's a whole lot more than you think about when you do those things. So, no, admin privileges should be very minimal. At that point, they have weaponized your workforce. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They're all part of the bot army. <laughs> all right, number five, which would then be the end of the top five, that if you did these things, you get 80% of the problems. Secure configuration for hardware and software on mobile devices, laptops, workstations, and servers. Have a plan. Know how you're going to configure your devices. Not just, okay, well, I'm sure that Bob secured that one and Sarah did that one over there. I'm sure it's secure. No. Did they have a checklist? Did they have a proper configuration plan? A standard operating procedure. An SOP. Yeah. Well, another thing, too, to mention about anything that deals with security is it is not a one and done thing. So I can secure something now, today, and it may not be secure in six months or six Mm -hmm. weeks or six minutes. (laughs) (laughs) If children are involved, six minutes. Yeah. But I mean, there's just things coming out all the time. Just like, oh, there's a new vulnerability found. There's this new uh, whatever found. And you're like, oh, well, now what I did to secure that is no longer Secure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now I have to do something else. So, you know, don't think because somebody set it up securely at some point that it stays that way. Which takes us to it's a perfect segue for item number six. Yeah. Maintenance, monitoring, and analysis of audit logs. So you're looking for those changes, making sure that things are going to get done. And we've talked about audit logs repeatedly. And uh, again, all of those six are things that are directly related to the HIPAA security rule requirements. And that's the basics. The basics, yes. As one can often say, HIPAA is very low security. If all you're doing is compliance with HIPAA, you're not doing security. Because, oh man, I gave you the opening. Compliance is not security. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, didn't, didn't catch it. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, you're not you're not getting what I'm putting down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that takes us then to the next step. But you got to finish those six before you go on to the next step. Uh, you can't skip around. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be in order. That's what people want is a checklist in order. I can't just pick the ones I want to do and ignore the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you could, but then you're not following the sys twenty. I did a sys two and a half. <laughs> the CS 1, 7, 5, and 12. <laughs> Not the 20. <laughs> but unfortunately, that first part is what everybody wants to skip because it's too hard or I don't have time or we're already doing that, I'm sure, so I'm not going to go check. I'm sure yeah. my IT guy's doing that stuff, so let's skip on to the other one. Exactly. <laughs> So that is the thing that no one is doing in most cases. Mm. And that's what drives people crazy is we stay focused on doing those first ones 
and not these others. So when we get to the next set, which is 7 through 16, a lot of these are where your average IT staff focuses. And you hope that somebody's doing the other stuff. Because okay. the other stuff, obviously, uh, lays the foundation to do this stuff properly. So we got the basics done so that we can do the foundational things that are next, which is email and web browser protections, which gets into email encryption like you and I just had a conversation about because of the question somebody asked me today. Yeah, I think we're going to just stop people from using email. <laughs> yeah, like that'll happen. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, How many times have you heard, this is the email killer? You know, nothing's doing it. You know, even the millennials are like, I don't want to do email. Good luck knowing what's going on then. You know, there's Slack, and those are your instantaneous conversations, or there's whatever other instant chat kind of thing you're using. But the bottom line is policies and decisions are made in email. Mm -hmm. And about a thousand newsletters a day. <laughs> and I think I get every one of them. That's right. But when you're talking about putting PHI in email, having encrypted email does not mean your PHI is safe in email. And that in itself is a huge problem because I can tell you, I know people where they fell for a phishing thing, they had encrypted email, so it was loaded up with PHI, they give up their credentials. The bad guys immediately sign in as them and take and suck down all of their emails. So it is truly exfiltrated, and now all that patient data is gone. You still have a copy. You don't even know. And every new one you add, it's automatically going to them until you know that it's happening so that you can change your password and reset things. So encrypted email doesn't mean you're fine. Please stop thinking that. Please, I'm begging you. And it means that you absolutely need to make sure that you're getting more uh, monitoring on it. And you need to make sure that you set yourself up with two factor authentication mm -hmm. and multi factor authentication, which we've talked about before. So, Email, web browser protections, those are part of the foundation. Next is malware defenses. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, people used to think that was the first thing to worry about. I have an antivirus. So I'm fine, right? Oh, God, I still hear that. Oh, my gosh. It drives me nuts. <laughs> yep. Maybe in 2007. <laughs> or it's, you know, you find out that they're running some obscure free version or mm -hmm. heck, even a non-obscure free version. <laughs> I know, really. You know, there, there, there are some that are, you know, at least you have something if you have the free versions. Right. So but, you're, running, you're running around in your underwear. At least you got some clothes on. <laughs> it's not appropriate, but you are covered. <laughs> uh, and moving right along. <laughs> you don't want to elaborate on that? <laughs> Well, you know, like right away, I'm I like an opening. It's really cold outside, and you just got your underwear on. That's what it means when you have a free <laughs> antivirus. You shouldn't go outside, <laughs> and if you do, don't stay out there very long. And in the summertime, you're going to get burned either way, <laughs> <laughs> and ridiculed by all of your friends. So <laughs> next, we get to limitation and control of network ports, protocols, and services. Now we're getting down into the get nerdy with me stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the stuff that your IT people, this is what they worry about. And it is indeed something you should worry about. Number nine, that's where it is. Mm. It's not one through five, six, seven, or eight. It's number nine. And that's when you start talking about those things. Then number 10, data recovery capabilities. Yeah, um, people seem to forget about a lot. <laughs> I know. Again, recent information. Oh, we got hit by ransomware. We're going to have to pay because we don't have a backup. What? How is that even possible in today's world on a business system? But, you know, they got a guy. He's trying to figure it out. <laughs> 
but data recovery capabilities, that's your disaster recovery. But mostly it's just your backup that you're thinking about because that's that disconnect that I always worry about when you ask, you know, here's the office and do you have disaster recovery? Yeah, our IT company handles our disaster recovery. You go to the IT company and they say, we don't do disaster recovery, we do backup. Two different viewpoints on the same topic. So it's very important that everybody understands backup is a required element of HIPAA. Backup is not disaster recovery, which is another required element. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. You didn't have anything to offer about that? How many times that's gotten you, I know. I have preached that for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this to be a two-and-a-half-hour podcast. No, really. We could preach about every one of these, couldn't we? Yeah, you're right. Uh, Come to the boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> Number 11, secure configuration for network devices such as firewalls, routers, and switches. Just like you standardize the configuration on your devices, you want to standardize and know what the configuration is on your firewalls, routers, and switches. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about you need to go check them every month and make sure no one's changed anything. It's up to date and there's not something happening. Go look. Yeah, and um, when there's a firmware update, which you know I'm sure everybody does firmware updates, <laughs> when there's a firmware update, that can change things. You know, yeah. You add or take away or or just flip and change stuff <laughs> like, change what? the thoughts you yeah. never know no yeah so but you got to keep an eye on it and you can't just say well we won't let the firmware update that doesn't help either <laughs> no uh -uh. so but you have policies and procedures so a number 11 is about managing your network devices and their security long term number 12 boundary defenses build a moat <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's essentially what they're talking about, you know, it's, it's, it's taking it that step further about where am I going to create little bitty segments of my networks? And we've talked about network segmentation and how important that is, but creating boundaries internally as well as externally. Right. Very important. But that's number 12. It's way on down in there. How many times do the IT people go in? When you're talking to a new client and they're like, well, so-and-so told us we needed to do all of these things, but they don't even have an inventory of their devices yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. They're trying to do some of the other things before they have a, the actual, you know, groundwork of what they should be working from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> yeah, so everybody's using the same username and password. Why do you care if you have a firewall? <laughs> <laughs> Got a great firewall. We need all these uh, security pieces, but everybody, you know, everybody knows everybody's username and password, and it hasn't changed in five years. But a few other people have quit or been fired since yeah. then. Yeah. Why don't you just stick a, a network port outside the door and let people just walk by and plug into it? <laughs> 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 all right. Number 13, data protection. Under HIPAA, this would be part of the basics. It would really move up to the basics. And, you know, the same thing under NIST CSF. Protection is is uh, falls a little bit higher in those categories. But again, the idea here is this is giving you the steps to do. You don't go to six and stop. You go through the whole thing. But you should probably move this one up if you're worried about HIPAA and trying to use this as a guide for HIPAA. But it's how are you going to protect the data, including Encryption at rest, encryption in transit, and blah, 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 blah. So it's not a backup? <laughs> Number 14. <laughs> <laughs> Control access based on the need to know. Hello, minimum necessary. So the, the driver that drives people home doesn't get access to the network? <laughs> I know, and all of the patient data. Uh, yeah. So, controlled access on the need to know. That's number 14. So, it's in the CIS 22. Wait, CIS 20 also. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people are like, well, everybody needs access to everything. <laughs> no, they don't. In the long run, you will pay a price for that. Guaranteed. Number 15, wireless access control. How about that, David? Let's have control to the wireless network. Mm -hmm. 
and let's don't set it and keep it for six years on the company based version and nobody's checking to see if those devices have firmware upgrades and so on and so forth. Let's separate the employees and the uh, guests uh, as well as the um, business traffic. Yeah. I'm a big fan of three wireless networks now. Yeah. And change those passwords every so yeah. often. Uh, yeah. Just for random reasons. If, if suddenly you realize you don't have to change that in a while, do it. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Number 16, account monitoring and control. This is the one that no one wants to do is monitor what people are doing on their networks and on their systems and with their data. And it's a huge problem with people who are in healthcare that they don't want to install those monitoring type applications on the EHR. Oh, it's too expensive. Well, and I can't do it manually because it's too time consuming. So we're just going to trust everybody to do what they're supposed to do. There's a big thud of <laughs> acceptance on that idea. <laughs> and we talk about that over and over. And we talked about it recently about the snooping stuff. It's, it's, that lack of monitoring and controls in healthcare is why it's a, one of the reasons that the Verizon database report said healthcare is the only industry that has a bigger problem with insiders than outsiders. Yeah. That's a badge you want. You know, some of the, especially the smaller practices, you know, they've got, oh, I got two, three people, you know, they've worked here for years. I'm just not worried about them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I get it. But it's trust but verify. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is you want to be able to prove should something happen, you're also wanting to be able to prove it wasn't them, that's maybe. Well, and that you were looking. Right. You know, that you, you took it seriously and you didn't assume. Because we know about assume. <laughs> what do we know about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's spelled A-S-S, you and me. <laughs> you and me. <laughs> Ah, so clearly, though, these are things that it's not just about HIPAA. It's not just about healthcare. It's one of the items that is part of what security professionals got together and decided should be part of the foundational requirements of any proper cybersecurity program. Right. And now we're at the end of that second phase. So you finish the first six, then you can move on to these. This is where, you know, all the techie people get excited and they do seven through 16. Mm-hmm. Again, almost all of it relates directly back to HIPAA and those that don't relate directly back to HIPAA itself in the law, they're part of policies and procedures somewhere along the way. So then you get to the very last section. Now, you got to get through all 16 before you get here. You don't just jump down here. We didn't lost 80% already. Uh huh. Because <laughs> they said all I got to do is the first five. Yeah, it's supposed <laughs> to be easy. <laughs> That's right. So, this is again how the SIS 20 compares to HIPAA because it says implement a security awareness and training program required under HIPAA. Right. Application software security required under HIPAA. Incident response and management required under HIPAA. Well, well. <laughs> the only thing not required under HIPAA is penetration test and red team exercises. Mm-hmm. And and you could kind of argue that it is. So yeah, those are the last bits that you do once you have the other things done. If you were doing these steps outside of the world of healthcare, it's pretty straightforward. You go boom, 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 boom. You just follow the list. Because healthcare does have HIPAA requirements, you've got to essentially do all of those things, and you don't do them in phases. You're supposed to do them all, all in, all the time. So being able to compare this, though, does help when, you know, somebody says something like HIPAA schmippa. <laughs> then you say, okay, well, let's not worry so much about HIPAA. Let's do what cybersecurity professionals have built Years ago, this is, I think, a version seven of it. They built this years ago, and let's follow these guidelines. Let's just follow these guidelines. And essentially, you're still going to get HIPAA done. 
Hmm. It's a way. You know, it's something that a lot of people desperately need to have is a way to get started. And it at least gives you that. But is it everything? Is it perfect? No, not going to be. But the good news is it's at least another reference that you have that shows you that what you're supposed to be doing isn't crazy. It isn't about anything that, oh, they're just trying to make my life hard. It's not. It's just something Donna came up with. (laughs) (laughs) Donna made it up. It's her fault. (laughs) <laughs> you know, people do say that. I'm throwing you under the bus at, at the board meeting. I just want you to know that I'm throwing you under the bus. I was like, go ahead. The bus hits me pretty regularly. <laughs> <laughs> I just bounce back up and you know, keep going where I'm going. But it is important to note that this does give you that standing to show it is not about regulations. This is doing what is considered effective management of your cybersecurity requirements and making sure that you're doing the minimums and then building a robust cybersecurity program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the privacy rule, that just tells you how to decide what you can and cannot do once you do have access to the data. All of these things are keeping you uh, from having access unless you should. And then the breach notification rule Well, that tells you what to do, what you have to do if uh, you screw that up. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. If you screw it up and let people in that shouldn't or the people that should have access do the wrong thing, that's what the breach notification rule is for. So there you have it, David. All right. Gives you something to work on. Mm -hmm. Well, and you can get all this at uh, C-I-S-E-C-U. Just (laughs) just do C-I-S-20. Google that. You'll find it. And uh, they also have companion guides that that drill down on how to apply these standards or these steps to mobile security and IoT. We haven't even gone into those, but they they provide that similar kind of approach. So if you're looking for something to help define your mobile security or your IoT security, those are great tools as well. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of good information on that website. Yeah, Highly and they want you to buy stuff, but you don't have to. You can still do stuff. <laughs> yeah, you can always borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, it does cross-reference to HIPAA in in, in their, uh, they have a big uh, crosswalk map, and it shows how it cross-referenced to HIPAA and a whole bunch of other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a big map <laughs> crosswalk. I know, it's T90, you can't even read it. I know. All right, great. That's our show for today. So everybody has learned the SIS-20 stuff. So maybe that'll be helpful. So next time somebody says, I don't understand what you're saying about SIS-20, I can just, here, just listen to this podcast. Exactly. There you go. It'll tell you all about it. (laughs) Yeah. So awesome. So we covered the basics, the foundational and the organizational aspects of that. So interesting to see how, how many people probably looked at that and said, well, how much of this do I have? And how much more do I have to do? (laughs) And for those who say HIPAA made easy, I mean, this is, yeah, <laughs> this is just the basic stuff. I don't know. What everybody should already be doing if you have a basic security stance in your, in your business or practice. If you're going to take it seriously, these are the things you should be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this no doesn't matter even, what. You know, this doesn't even get into the cybersecurity framework, which is, you know, a little more intense. Mm-hmm. So, good deal. All right. So that's our show for today, folks. Thanks for listening. Make sure you share it out on your favorite social media platform. Send us a big old five-star rating. We always appreciate those. (laughs) I know. You forgot to do that in the beginning where everybody's listening. I know. So just, you know, rewind it backwards and then you'll hear it. (laughs) In the front. (laughs) Uh, You might want to check out the Hippo Boot Camp if you're interested. If if the card's still open, then we have openings. If not, then, uh, you know, sign up for next time. Maybe we'll do a, mm-hmm. a, you know, early, early, early bird special. Oh, jeez. No, we're not going beyond the worm. <laughs> All right. So thanks for listening, folks. For Donna and myself, remember that HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. 
For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.